NASA says it's time to prioritize the planet Venus. This follows the recent discovery of possible life on the planet. If you were to take a peek at NASA's records from the 1960s, you'd notice the space agency calling Venus a planet from hell at the same time Mars became our destiny. Such careful labeling of the innermost planets isn't a coincidence. During the turbulent space race era, the Soviet Union was fixated on sending costly missions to Venus. The hellish planet showed little to no prospects for life, yet the Soviet space program didn't decommission the Venera program until the fall of the empire. Thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we finally know why. Join us as we break down the declassified photos from Venus taken by the Soviet Union. The fall of the Soviet Union was dynamic in more ways than one. Not only did it change the geopolitical course of the world, but the loss of the empire also sank many secrets with it. It's not unknown that the Soviets had a deep affinity for secrets, from running the most advanced intelligence agency in the world to being hush-hush about their potential alien contact. The former superpower carries numerous mysteries within itself. Believe it or not, before the United States of America took over most of the planetary efforts in outer space, the Soviet Union was leading the game. While the Empire has a long history of successful and unsuccessful space missions, its biggest fixation was on the inner hellish planet Venus. In the Russian language, you'd recognize Venus as Venera, and hence the subsequent name of the mission that spanned from 1961 to 1983. During the same time, the United States of America was busy sending its missions to the moon. So strategically, the Soviets decided to use their resources elsewhere. We can't say that the entire obsession with the second planet from our sun is an odd. Did the Soviets plan on using the planet's surface as a viable and unbeatable military base? Or were they possibly looking to colonize the planet after searching for any forms of life up there? It's quite difficult to say why the Empire was obsessed with the hellish planet. Since the Soviets commissioned these exploration voyages during the Cold War, they weren't exactly forthcoming with their aims and objectives. In fact, everything we know about the Venusian missions is due to unarchived and declassified evidence. Even then, it's hard to pinpoint what the Soviets were searching for and if they cracked the secret missions. Because, well, the Empire didn't land on Venus once, twice, or thrice, that's just elementary, folks. The Soviets launched 28 pricey spacecraft to the hellish planet, and 13 of those entered the Venusian atmosphere while 8 landed successfully. Such sophisticated missions had put the Empire in a leading position in space exploration initiatives. Sure, the United States of America was a close first too, but NASA was more interested in satellites and technological configuration than exploring life on planets. Its affection for Mars came later. So your history textbook might not tell you this, but the Soviet space program was the first agency to send a probe into the atmosphere of a planet other than Earth. It has another bunch of firsts on its resume as well. The USSR also became the first state to make a soft landing on another planet. It commissioned the first initiative that brought back images and sounds from the surface of other planets. Yep, the Soviets had their own moment of small step for a man, a giant leap for mankind that was well before the U.S., so how come we rarely get to read about such landmark missions? Very rarely. Remember what we said about the Soviet affinity for keeping secrets? Well, that's just one of the many reasons behind the censorship of the Soviet space program. Back in 1992, the popular agency was decommissioned in the aftermath of the USSR. As the agency had to be revived with its new Russian identity, Roscosmos, a lot of its archival data was either lost or destroyed. This is exactly why we don't have a clear-cut answer for why the Soviets launched 28 spacecraft into the Venusian atmosphere. But if we had to make the most logical guess, perhaps the Soviet decision to explore Venus was about cost efficiency more than anything else. This is not to say that the space program wasn't optimistic about the habitability of the planet. They were looking for sustainable water presence, intensity of solar radiation, and the overall temperament of the planet. Without a series of these space missions, it would have been next to impossible to gauge Venus's high temperatures and thick atmosphere. Of course, today many cosmologists don't believe that the hellish planet can support life. The temperatures up there are high enough to melt lead, and water is scarce. Plus, due to its thick atmosphere, the air pressure on Venus is 90 times that of our planet Earth. But these are quite recent and modern tidings. 
and to disregard the USSR's contribution to the study of Venus is equivalent to censoring history. As far as the Soviets were concerned, Venus was worth exploring, even if it was just about galvanizing the space race. You see, exploring more habitable planets like Mars wasn't exactly off the table, but it was more costly than probing into Venus. Everything just boils down to the distance from planet Earth to any other cosmological body. On average, the hellish planet is only 40 million kilometers away from our home, while Mars, on average, is 250 million kilometers away. Such vast differences in distance amount to drastic differences in the costs as well. If the United States of America wasn't the world's largest economy, it wouldn't have been easy to explore Mars. Other rumors on the block also suggest that the Soviet missions were unreliable and had massive technical gaps. Apparently, the spacecraft wasn't suitable to cover astronomical distances. Plus, the agency had a bad trajectory of losing contact with its spacecraft. So it makes sense why the Soviet space program was opting for a shorter and closer transit that would actually yield results. Yet, if we don't bring up the space race in this context, the story of Venera missions would be incomplete. The United States of America wasn't even on the space map when the Soviet program launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in 1957. This particular maneuver had intensified the space tussle to maintain its hegemony. But what's really interesting is why the U.S. had fixated itself on the moon in the first place. Uncharted territory aside, NASA had a series of failures with its Venus missions in the 1960s and so on. The U.S. space agency had found itself in a deadlock called the Venus Curse. Every time they launched a probe into the Venusian atmosphere, it went horribly wrong. This is precisely when the Soviet Union saw an opportunity to capitalize on NASA's failures. At that time, both the U.S. and USSR were hellbent on claiming the space race. The most logical venture was to steer away with two different options. It was a silent agreement. Very strategically, the Soviet space program took hold of the Earth's sister planet. For the agency, the biggest landmark in the space tussle was to do something that its competitive counterpart had failed to do. Despite the Empire's limited resources and mismanaged government, it repeatedly sent missions to Venus to find its winning position against the U.S. As opposed to that, NASA had taken hold of the Moon's mission. But of course, this strategic partition wasn't without hostility and propaganda. To cover up their colossal failures with Venus, the American agency was incentivized to defame the USSR's fixation with the planet. In Americanized popular media, Venus was dubbed as the hellish planet, while Mars became man's destiny. These connotations didn't matter to the Soviets, though. Their only objective was to show superiority to the Americans, and well, they weren't unsuccessful in doing so. The Venera missions are almost forgotten in today's history. However, despite their dated emergence, those missions were highly sophisticated, advanced, and ambitious. In fact, if we have to pick an event that marked the dawn of the space age, the Venera explorations will definitely take the lead. Back in the 1950s, the Soviets began to experiment with the design and construction specifics of the probes. And for the next 30 years, they kept building and launching interplanetary spacecraft as part of the Venera program. Since the program was running parallel with a highly turbulent Cold War, the Soviets were obsessed with optimizing their resources. Luckily for them, the early years of the war gave them more heavy lifting capacity than the United States of America. That advantage proved to be super beneficial. Maximizing on their capabilities, the USSR started to build and launch bigger spacecraft that were designed to maintain high altitudes and vast distances. The Soviets were quick to experiment with both manned and unmanned spacecraft. At the same time, the Soviet scientific community was working on a series of calculations and estimations to create accurate trajectories for the Venus missions. In the background, their Mars programs were also running successfully. For the Soviet Space Agency, nothing was more important than developing sophisticated instrumentation for these probes. This translated to the biggest revelation in the history of cosmological studies. In 1966, the Soviet Agency launched Venera 3 making it the first artificial probe to enter the atmosphere of Venus and successfully touch the planet's surface. This groundbreaking success had amplified the competition between the two superpowers. As opposed to the American missions that were filled with failures and deadlocks, 
the Soviet program continued to gain traction. Despite the program's slow burn, the USSR was pulling all the strings to send successful probes into the Venusian atmosphere. The biggest problem with this trajectory was limited design capacity. The Soviets were quick to overcome their design issues and launched the biggest spacecraft of the Venera program in the 1970s. Their high lifting capacity allowed them to conduct the first dual launches of Venera 4 and Venera 5. According to most historians, this was the most interesting decade in the history of cosmological studies. As a matter of fact, the United States of America and the USSR had created a trajectory of launching competing probes to Venus. The Soviets were already leading the race but NASA wasn't one to give up. The U.S. agency launched Mariner 5 in the same decade, creating a fierce competition between the two entities. Most cosmologists believe that this particular event had fueled the space race to its maximum, making both entities extremely ambitious and assertive in their approach. Despite Mariner 5's massive success, the Soviet space agency once again created history with its Venera program. In 1975, the Soviets launched the biggest spacecraft in their history. A five-ton heavy probe, Venera 9, had marked a series of firsts for the agency. It was the first time any spacecraft could successfully take and beam back high-resolution black and white photographs of the Venusian surface. The photograph series has a bunch of firsts for the world as well. These were the first snaps that humanity had taken on a planet other than our own. And just so you know, this was all happening almost two decades before NASA's Mars obsession. The advanced photographic instrumentation on Venera 9 gave the world some first looks at Venus's rough and rocky terrain. These photographs had enhanced the global scientific community's collective understanding of the Venusian atmosphere. What's more interesting is that the Soviet obsession with the planet didn't die down with the landmark achievement. The very next year, the USSR Space Agency commissioned the subsequent probe, Venera 10. It became the first spacecraft to use color imaging technology. So if you ever get to watch pictures of Venus, the brightly colored ones were taken by Venera 10. The Soviet space program continued with its fixation for another seven years, launching a series of Venera spacecraft. Each launch was designed to be more sophisticated, advanced, and detailed than the previous one. However, it wasn't until Venera 13 that the Soviet agency achieved its biggest landmark in 1981. The USSR commissioned its final probe to the hellish planet. Not only did Venera 13 take highly advanced color pictures of Venus, but it also became the first spacecraft to beam back the recorded sounds of the Venusian atmosphere. This particular mission had altered the course of cosmological studies forever. Even though the Soviet Union came to a sudden halt in the early 90s, its contribution to planetary exploration had ensured an everlasting legacy for humanity. You see, a lot of what we know today about the planet Venus comes from the Soviet probe series. As the empire sank with its secrets, it also ensured that its cosmological milestones would be declassified sooner or later. Despite such monumental success, it's interesting why the U.S. and USSR didn't enter the space race together. Both of these superpowers had adopted an isolated approach to planetary. Both the U.S. and USSR had distinct strategic and ideological reasons for focusing on different celestial bodies. The Soviet Union, emerging from World War II as a superpower alongside the United States, sought to demonstrate its scientific and technological prowess to the world. Space exploration became a potent arena for this competition, known as the space race, which mirrored the broader ideological rivalry between communism and capitalism during the Cold War. For the Soviets, Venus represented a challenging yet accessible target for exploration. Its proximity to Earth compared to Mars made it a pragmatic choice for early space missions. Despite the extreme conditions on Venus, such as its scorching temperatures and crushing atmospheric pressure, the Soviet space program saw an opportunity to achieve significant scientific milestones. By sending multiple probes like the Venera series, they aimed to not only gather data, but also to score symbolic victories over their American rivals. In contrast, NASA and the United States turned their attention predominantly towards the moon. The lunar missions, culminating in the historic Apollo 11 landing in 1969, were driven by President Kennedy's ambitious vision to demonstrate American technological superiority and secure a strategic foothold in space. The moon missions captivated global audiences and showcased American ingenuity, 
effectively eclipsing much of the Soviet achievements in the public eye. While the U.S. focused on high-profile lunar landings, the Soviet Union quietly advanced its Venus exploration efforts. The Venera missions, despite facing technical challenges and occasional setbacks, steadily accumulated groundbreaking achievements. These included the first successful soft landing on another planet, the first transmission of images from the surface of another planet, and the first analysis of another planet's atmosphere. The Venera program continued to push the boundaries of space exploration, leveraging the USSR's expertise in rocketry and spacecraft design. Each mission built upon the lessons learned from previous attempts, refining technology and techniques for surviving and operating in Venus's harsh environment. These missions not only expanded humanity's understanding of planetary science, but also laid the groundwork for future explorations of other celestial bodies in the solar system. Moreover, the Soviet Union's approach to Venusian exploration reflected its broader scientific ambitions and commitment to international prestige. Despite economic challenges and political tensions, the USSR maintained a robust space program that contributed significantly to the global body of scientific knowledge. The legacy of the Venera missions endures as a testament to human curiosity and perseverance in the face of daunting challenges. In hindsight, both the U.S. and USSR achieved remarkable milestones during the space race, each leaving a lasting impact on space exploration and scientific discovery. The competition spurred rapid advancements in technology and engineering, paving the way for future generations of space explorers. Today, as new missions to Venus are being planned and executed by various space agencies, including NASA and ESA, the lessons learned from the Venera missions continue to inform and inspire efforts to unravel the mysteries of our neighboring planets. Thus, while Venus remains a forbidding and inhospitable world, the daring exploits of the Soviet Venera program serve as a reminder of humanity's quest for knowledge and our unyielding spirit of exploration in the cosmos.